Hello everybody, welcome to the show. Just thought I'd have a dramatic pause there for a second to annoy Drew for a moment. Hello everybody, welcome to the Sunday service. Um, Drew, dare I whisper it? The oh. first Sunday Sorry, service. Hang on, John. It's extremely loud. I'm just going to turn my volume down a bit. Let's have another go. Oh, that better? Yes. All this yeah. time, we've all this time beforehand to iron this out, and then wait until we go live. Oh, then... oh right. Oh, Rich, this is. Oh. Right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the... I've lost the will to live now, frankly. Welcome to the Interesting Modelling Company Sunday service. Drew! Oh, that was the, the ad-libbed thing that we're going to do. Is killed now. Drew, it's the first of our shows in the autumn. It's glorious, isn't it? It's raining currently outside, and the, the, the night's getting darker, and it's raining, and it's just perfect. Do you know it's what? Just... When I woke up this morning and let derp out, I couldn't believe how cold it was. Yeah, right, it's, right. Proper cold it was. It's uh, it's it's really well. Apart from the fact that if it does get too cold, you know, you, everybody's going to freeze to death because nobody can afford to pay for anything. Um, you know that that aside, it's um, it's all it's all rather fetching, I think. Um, I'm just going to go. And, I'm just going to go and pack my MacBook and go and sit in cafes and do all my work in that during the week, and then come <laughs> home in the evening. And um... yeah, well, I, th I think I think several million people might be of the same mind. Yeah, I've I worked out that if if I kind of work out how much it's going to cost me during the day to kind of go down to a go down to a couple of cafes because I don't want to don't want to outlive me. Bless you. I don't want to outlive me. Welcome. Um, now now you clean your screen. Um, his um, he told me off before I had a big sneeze. He told me to clean my screen. I worked out that if I if I kind of go around and kind of do like two or three cafes a day so I don't outlive my my stay there. I reckon it's in tea. It's probably cheaper than actually working at home with the uh, with the with the you know with the power. Apart from the fact, obviously, the MacBook is only going to last a certain amount of time. The battery, but I reckon it's doable. I reckon I could do that. Do a couple of hours work in the morning, come home, recharge the MacBook, then go out in the afternoon, do some more work in the afternoon. <laughs> it's a plan. It's a plan, people. I think it's a genius plan. Uh, Martin and, Lewis, and, and only and only a little bit tongue in cheek. Uh, only a little bit tongue in cheek. I think Martin Lewis will be on the phone to me saying, "What's this fantastic plan you come?" I say, "Yes, it is. Look at this. Look, it's genius." And um, the Dave Fleming says, um, he says, he says, it's been warm and sunny here this afternoon. Proper Indian summer weather was chucking it down this morning. Um, uh, Crazy Locker says it's autumn. Ninety-four degrees Fahrenheit here today, and no hurricanes yet. Wow. Well, yeah, it's well, it's 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 lovely here. It's very cold. It's it's super. Um, Ian Rusco says um, at this rate it'd be cheaper to sit in the car with the engine and heater on than with the central heating. I know. Well, well, folks, we don't want to depress you. It'd be cheaper. It'd be cheaper to sit in the car with the engine on in uh, parking at Bristol Airport. <laughs> don't start the Bristol Airport parking thing again. Oh, I don't want people to think that they've kind of walked into a private joke here. Suffice to say, Drew's not very happy with the uh, the cost of parking at Bristol Airport. So, well, if you must fly. Um, and Gordon J says, good evening from sunny Ayrshire. Lovely. Very nice. Um, and, uh, and Travis Thompson says, dun, da, 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 da. he says, morning. I tried to get past FB mentions uh, issue for Airfix Autumn. Fingers crossed it can be seen. Uh, yep. Well, there we go, folks. We have rebranded ourselves, and uh, we are doing uh, Airfix Autumn now because, uh, frankly, we run out of time. September was uh, sorry, August wasn't long enough, so we're going to be doing uh, Airfix Autumn, uh, an extended celebration of all things Airfix. Just grab an Airfix kit, and join in. Any Airfix kit, any subject, any scale runs throughout Autumn 2022. How awesome that we've extended this joyous gift! 
of building models uh, to you, our, our, you know, our loyal followers. So there we go. That's the plan. We are going to be doing other things, but that's the thing that we'd like to still get people to get behind is let's have a, let's have a, a nice big celebration of the home team in the autumn. So there we go. Airfix autumn. And I will get around to finishing off the Austin in the next week or so. And then actually Bill finish that Spitfire off. How exciting. So there we go. There we go. There we go. So, Drew, try and make this sound up. Like we haven't rehearsed this because, trust me, yeah. we have not rehearsed this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless it isn't plainly obvious, there's been no rehearsal. There's been no rehearsal. There's barely been, any, um, barely been any, any preparation this week. But we do have some kits to talk about, new releases. And we are, fingers crossed, we are hoping that Mr. Pollard might join us for the latter part of the program. But if he doesn't, um, then you know we won't uh, we won't worry I can, about it. I can right? I can squeal on my own. Yeah, I can squeal on my own. Although I will say thank you to uh, his wife Liz for the lovely uh, little Christmas planner countdown she sent me. A hundred day countdown to Christmas, and I can't wait for I think it's September the seventeenth when the officially the hundred days starts. So I'm very happy, and I'm sure Liz is. And I'm, and I'm sure I'm sure Spencer despises us both. But there we go. Um, so oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I know I do. Fair enough. Well, that's all right. I'll just tick you off the list. I'll put not only am I putting you on the naughty list, I'm putting you on the horrible list. So there we go. Nothing for you this year, matey. Um, right. Let us kick off with a new company. And this is a company called DBMK Model Kits. And they have announced two models for their initial releases, which are by all accounts injection molded. The first of which is the it's a one thirty second scale de Havilland Hornet, and the other one that they have apparently got in the works is a forty eight scale Supermarine Scimitar. Now we haven't got any images of the Scimitar yet, but they have released some artwork of the Hornet um, uh, and the various Hornet schemes. So we'll try and get these uh, back into order here. Um, there we go. So scheme one. Um, and that is, God, is that four squadron? Don't think so. No, 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 I can't. I can't see what it is. They haven't labelled it, and I haven't got the right glasses on. But we got essentially you've got five schemes there. And one of the one of our viewers will pick us up on that. Um, essentially, there's five schemes. There's one in. Um, is that ocean grey or um, medium sea grey or dark sea grey? I think that's dark sea grey. I think sea it's, grey. it's, it's uh, dark sea grey and dark green over PRU blue, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just checking it wasn't medium sea grey. But anyway, dark no, sea grey no, and no, dark no. green. They were, they were over, all dark sea grey. Yeah, over PR blue. Uh, then we have, well, that sequence here, we have a very nice um, uh, overall kind of like aluminium painted aircraft uh, in... The very dooley bird colours, really, aren't they? Well, that's a that's an F one as well, I think. Yeah, it's an F one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then we have uh, that one, which is medium sea grey and PR blue. Uh, like I say, unfortunately, they haven't listed on their uh, website what these what the scheme choices are, and we didn't have enough time to kind of rehearse, re re research them tonight. So you know, we're just picking our way through these. But yeah, there we go. So a nice medium sea grey and PR blue. Then we have another. Well, always like that one. one. I like that. That's very much the frog kit, isn't it? I've always liked that scheme. I've always liked that scheme as well. That is very um, nice. I mean, the one thing I'm noticing is that if the um, uh, if these uh, profiles are based off of the the, the kit design, um, if nothing else, the windscreen is nominally correct for once. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is which is caught, you know. Um, Pretty much everybody except for um, um, Taro out, hasn't it? Yes, um, exactly. Um, yeah. So it, it, that that sort of gives you hope just looking at that, doesn't it? That um, yeah. the windscreen looks nominally correct. But this is my this is this is a, a my favourite Hornet scheme. Mm -hmm. Forty one um, squadron that is. Yeah, I like the um, I like the tactical roundels. Mm. Um, it's almost ahead of its time, isn't it? With all tactical roundels and. Well, those would have been Type B, not tactical. Those would have been Type B. Back right then, sure? well, only fifties, isn't it? So yeah, no, that that that, that would have still been Type B. The tactical roundels didn't come in until the early nineteen seventies because the tactical the tactical roundel is actually made up of 
50 percent well it's 50 50 isn't it but yeah 50 50. I'm sure that we'll find... 50 uh that's the problem uh i mm, just checking that one uh that one there where where are we oh let's get the other one up there we go um i think they would have been type b at that time but that, i'm i'm going to shoot myself in the foot here um uh massively shoot myself in the foot because i don't think the tactical roundels came in until the early 1970s i think up until then they would have been type b but i'm sure i'm just going to check the comments here um uh da, 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 da. um yeah, no, no. I would have to have to throw that out, out to discussion. Really, what? When did the tactical roundel come in? I thought they came in in the late sixties, early seventies. Uh, anyway, um, there we go. And we got another one there. That one is um, in medium sea grey and PR blue. So, um, you, some very you're showing nice an overall PR blue one at the moment, John. Sorry, you're showing an overall PRU blue one at is the moment. Over? No, I, I. Well, this is it. I can't tell whether the. Uh, whether that upper fuselage is actually in no, the, the, this is this is a um, this is a PR one, um, right? Okay, that, blue. there we so. go, folks. Th that's the perils of doing shaded artwork these days because it can throw you. I honestly thought that was a medium C grade uh, no. upper fuselage. But there we go. There we go. Um, uh, yep. Yeah, so there we go. You've got it's a mix of F ones and F threes, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and utterly, I mean, an utterly glorious aeroplane. Mm. <laughs> utterly, you know, um, it was just absolutely perfect. What, That's very what nice. an aeroplane. Yeah. What an aeroplane. And as uh, several people have commented in the... Um, uh, several people have commented in the, uh, uh, in the comments here, and that is uh, QV-19 Squadron, of course. Uh, like I say, that's that's very much the markings of uh, of Dooley Bird there, isn't it? It's kind of a uh, almost like a homage. Yeah, bird. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, Dave Fleming says tactical roundels were early nineteen. Where's Dave gone? He says tactical rounds were early nineteen seventies. Not to say that the Hornets roundels were correct. Mm, that's a good point. I think what we we'll, what we might do is uh, we might have a quick look online just to look at. To have them and Hornets and get to the bottom of that because that's an interesting, that's an interesting little thing to kind of start the show with, isn't it? Is you know, the roundels on the De Havilland Hornet. It's the, the, the De Havilland Hornet is one of those aircraft that's perennially popular with people, yeah. but is also a, a a a permanent enigma, isn't it? Because yeah. because they because they're all gone, it, it's one of those aircraft that's remained a permanent enigma both in in research and um and, and general knowledge. Um, we all know what it looks like, um, but nailing down the details often turns into a bit of a, 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 a treasure hunt. Yeah. In fact, I'm just doing a, uh, bear with me a second. I've just found, uh, some images. Um, so they definitely look like B, they definitely look like B roundels. Um, and we're not saying that the, uh, that, uh, the manufacturers have got this wrong. We're just pointing out, um, the you know the difference between tactical roundels and uh b roundels right let me let me call up this image now here we go let's get this let's get this going here share screen uh window there we go preview uh, oh for goodness sake it's doing that thing again where it's saying i don't ha i don't have permission to share things on my computer which is a pain dons la derriere so um Let's just go. Let's just go. The le the path least resistance, which is uh, share an image. We'll get there in the end, folks. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, been on your holidays recently? Uh, <laughs> no, no. You have actually. Um, uh, you have been. So here we go. Uh, uh -huh. Right. We'll get there in the end, folks. Um, there we go. So that's definitely a B type roundel. I think we can all agree that. Yeah, no, no. I'm yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. But yeah, fine. I'll agree with that. There. I think there was going to be a little bit of disagreement there for a second. Um, no, that's definitely that's definitely, definitely a tactical roundel. Uh, <clears throat> ah, that's definitely a B-type roundel, that. Um, and I was just looking at some other images of the Havilland Hornets here. And again, they are... 
They are B-type roundels for well, sure. Who needs, who needs a flying helmet when you can slick your hair with Brill Cream? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, what a fantastic <laughs> aeroplane, though. Look at it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just... It's it's kind of like it it it, it kind of had that mix of the uh, the 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 mosquito obviously in terms of its lineage, but also there's still a kind of like a a bit of a touch of the Western world with them about as well, isn't there? It's just size, isn't it? It's uh, mm. it's just a a small, nimble. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those. It's just another one of those piston aircraft that was was just literally months too late. Yeah, you know, um, uh, I mean that would have um, that would have certainly cleared Hags um, in the Pacific, wouldn't it? Yeah, uh, Dave Fleming mm -hmm. says I'm sure some are in medium sea grey, slate grey over PR blue. Uh, quite possibly, Dave. Obviously, you know we're not we're not commenting on the accuracy of the profiles we've we've seen so far. Um, we're we're just kind of like trying to second guess what they're supposed to be. But, um, but yeah, those are definitely B type roundels. So. There we go. Division, so, interesting division line around the nose there, because that is anything but straight. No. And it also looks like it's free-handed. No, well, that's what I was thinking, yeah. Um, yeah. Let me just see if I can pull up some more images of that particular aeroplane, because there are some... Um, there are some uh, other ones of it out there. Um, but, um, ba -ba, let's have a look. Um there was another picture of it. No, that one, the, the other picture of it, you can't really see the nose. It's a little bit kind of uh, fudged by the engines. Um, but, yeah, fabulous-looking aeroplane, though. I mean, uh, dare I say it, though, I do think that the de Havilland Seahorn is the slightly more interesting aeroplane. But oh, It's probably more interesting, but it's certainly not more attractive. Mm. <laughs> they certainly, um, you know, they, 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 they certainly the night fighter, the NF-21, they... Um, yeah, yeah, it didn't. <laughs> it wasn't. It didn't um, compared to this. Fair enough. Um, but what a glorious, what a glorious, glorious aeroplane! But it's, it's, mm. you know, month, months too late. The you know, you could have seen those in the Pacific operating along with Tiger Cats from the U.S. Navy. You know, um, which would again just too late. Because um, uh, Eric Winkle Brown flew both of those, and he said that uh, the Tiger Cat was clearly the superior night fighter. Um, but it wasn't as much fun to fly as the Hornet. So, <laughs> no, fabulous aeroplane. And like I say, they're also going to be doing a uh, forty-eight scale Supermarine Scimitar, which even in forty-eight scale, that's going to be a fair old lump of aeroplane, isn't it? Well, it's the same. It's, it's about the same size as a Buccaneer. It's mm -hmm. you know, it's a it's a massive aeroplane, the Scimitar. I mean, mm -hmm. people see this little, you know, this bubble canopy and. You know, but but you don't often look at the size of the pilot sat under that bubble canopy, and then you realise that it's actually a gigantic aeroplane. Mm. No, it is uh, it is a big old aeroplane, but I think it's uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, I think a forty eight scale uh, scimitar has been on a lot of people's uh, wants list in the last few years. I'll be honest, it's not been on mine. It's not really an aeroplane that I find massively interesting, but I'm sure, you know, once I see some plastic, I'll do my usual thing, flip-flop, and suddenly, um, you know, declare it to be... I, I mean, I, I really... I, I love the, I love the Scimitar, um, but I, I kind of... I, I, I would question the wisdom of it being an initial release in 48 scale from a new company. Um, I it's just it doesn't it just doesn't seem to me that it's going to have that that kind of market. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, whereas I, actually I think a seventy second scale one would be entirely marketable. Um, well, but I, 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 I sort of have my doubts um, about the uh, the wisdom in forty eight scale, but we'll see. You know, um, it's, I, I wish them all the all the luck in the world if they can pull it off. Yeah, well, this um, is DBMK uh, model kits, um, and they've only just really started posting on Facebook. And they say, here are the marketing schemes for our 30-second scale Hornet kit. So that is about as much as we know at the moment. Apparently, they've been, they're have been they doing their models using uh, LiDAR scanning techniques and things, which, interesting, seeing as there aren't any Hornets around, but you know what I mean. Um so uh, that is going to be um, that is going to be a company to watch, and by all accounts, they are 
British company, I think, or based in this yes, country. Yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah. Dotco. So, UK. Yeah, um, so yeah, I think, I think they've said they're only going to produce stuff that they can actually scan, or there is really, really good, detailed um, uh, reference material for. So mm. um, well, we 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 shall see. I mean, like I say, certainly wish them all the luck in the world. Absolutely. Here we go. Here's their um, here's their website, and it says about us. Um, it's run by Will and Ilya, and uh, it kind of gives you the. Um, gives you kind of like the, the spiel on the company and what they're working on. So that all looks good. They're going to be at scale model world. So that's going to be certainly interesting. Um, uh, so not much to see on the website at the moment, but obviously they've only just uh, kicked this thing off. But like I say, good luck to them. Um, uh, you know, if, if, if these turn out to be really We shall nice, be watching closely. We shall be watching closely and we shall be, you know, um, giving them the, giving them a you know a good amount of publicity to uh, to hopefully get you know to get them on their way really so yeah very nice 30 second scale de Havilland Hornet and a 48 scale Supermarine Scimitar what a what a start to the show there Pow! Oh, absolutely, Pow! absolutely. Pow! any any show that starts with a, with a de Havilland Hornet is off to a yeah rip roaring start isn't it rip roaring start yeah. um uh, Bill, yeah, we go. Bill Clark says there is some evidence that early camouflage hornets were dark green and old stocks of ocean grey. That's what I'm thinking, Bill. That they were dark green, ocean grey, and PR blue. Um, but we'll we'll find out. You know, we'll find out what what they're doing. You know, when uh, when their stuff is uh, released or whatever. And Dave Mummery says this is interesting. He says Will is in our local model club. Lots of ideas and a solid guiding guiding philosophy. Well, Dave, David, rather. If you can get uh, if you can get Will to come on the show, that'd be good. We'd, we'd have him on. Yeah, Talk absolutely. Yeah, Abs absolutely. Throwing throwing the invite out there, Will. If you'd like to come on our show, you would be more than welcome. Um, and uh, Steve Moore says he doesn't he hasn't built anything seventy seconds scale for years. Uh, well, Steve, you're you're missing out there. You're missing out um, because uh, our next uh, our next thing to talk about here is an update on what we were talking about last week, and that is the Armour Holding P39Q Aero Cobra, of which there's more information has come out uh, over the last few days or so. But goodness me, I am I am so excited for this kit. It's it's off the scale. We want, um, we want, we want. <laughs> we want, we want, we want. We've got some colour schemes uh, to show now, but we're just going to have a run through some updated CAD images here. Um, I mean, I'm looking... I'm looking at this, and I'm, I'm still having to remind myself this is a 72nd scale aircraft. Yeah, I love I love the fact they're going to provide nose weight, and it's all fitted. Yeah, um, that's uh, that, that's great, and I'm nicely tucked away there because it's you know it's um it, it's quite difficult to find room <laughs> in yep. a P39 for nose weight. Um, so so if they've taken that uh, if they've taken that away from you that 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 problem away from you, great. It is a bit of a pain to um, to try and get a P thirty eight to to sit on its um, to sit on its uh, on its tricycle undercarriage. And I don't know if you remember back in the early nineteen nineties, there was a company that did a um, did a King Cobra in resin. Yes, do you remember that one? Um, I think yes, and they also did um, one of the um, French companies also did a limited run injection molded one in forty eight that I built. Um, yeah. Which was equivalently challenging, shall we say? Well, let's just say uh, the resin one was beautiful, but goodness me, you couldn't get it to sit on its nose at all. It just it naturally was a a tail sitter. So uh, a little bit of copper wire had to be used to um, you know to kind of get it get it going there. It's interesting looking at this where it looks like you can see how they they've broken down the um, the the fin rudder and the fillets, everything there. To get um, you know to 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 get everything to mold properly, so that's a, an interesting touch by by Armour Hobby, especially the little fillets at the front. So very nicely done, very very nicely done. Uh, they also going to do do you some masks as well, which is always more than welcome. Yes, and they're also, yes. They're also Ooh. doing some three D printed bits as well, some pre order specials, which uh, is a seat, some machine gun barrels. Some uh, throttle quadrants and some very nice exhaust pipes. And there's also the cannon barrels for the the, the centre. 
the, the boss, the yeah, the propeller boss. Mm. Then we come to the meat and potatoes of this kit, which is the 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 decal schemes or the decal schemes or the transfer schemes. And we've got well, some very interesting mix of aircraft there, including um, a uh, well, one from the Mediterranean theater, which we'll come to in a minute. We've got a French one there. And the single Polish example. Oh, that's an Italian one. Italian, rather. Um, oh, God, get me brain in tonight. Um, an Italian one and the single Polish example. So um, there we go. There's the the odd the odd one out, the Polish one. I think of which there was only one aircraft anyway. But it, it's there if you want it, and it's also a um, it's a Polish company. So you know you're going to get a Polish one anyway. Then we have a that's very nice. I do like that. I do. There was a um, um, was he because there was a few in that scheme, wasn't there? Mm. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a that, that's a nice scheme. I do like that. Mm. It's just, yeah. I think it's just a great looking aeroplane. Yeah. You know, there's your Italian one. Yeah, Completely it's French. Some horse on the tail there. Look. Yeah, that's the clue. Um, a nice Italian one, um, which again kind of broadens out the scope and the appeal of the uh, the P thirty nine. Then we have that one, which is rather nice. Do like those red surrounds to the star and bar. Um, that is, I like that. I like that. But the one I really like, and this is the one I will definitely be building when this kit comes out, and that's one from the Mediterranean Theatre. Look at that. That's just that's got weathering written all over it, hasn't it? I just think it's such a great looking aeroplane. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, I think it's a very well balanced aeroplane. Mm. Um, that kind of uh, mounting the engine where they did meant they moved the wing back quite a way as well. Mm. Um, so it's sort of like the, there's almost as much aeroplane in front of the wing as there is behind it, which is quite unusual for a World War II prop aircraft. Mm. Um, and I think it just gives it a real it gives it a real sense of balance to me. Mm. It really does. I just think it's a, a, a really fine looking aeroplane. I think it's just uh, um, Travis says there are sprue shots out there now too. Yeah, unfortunately we just didn't have time to um, we didn't have time to include them tonight. But guess what? We'll be coming back to this kit on future shows, so we'll include them next time round. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's. I think these are great choices. They're they're very interesting schemes. Um, I mean, I like that Polish one. I think that's yeah. Um, I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of looking at that and thinking if you did a really good weathering job on that. Well, I'm going back to the um, to the P fifty one with that unloved Japanese scheme, but I don't know. I I like my I like my one in the um, in the Japanese scheme. I think it just looks deliciously funky. Yeah. Uh, like I say, we've got uh, we've got a nice American one there from the I'm trying to think what theatre that would be. White tails. Um, it'll come to me. Uh, it's been a long day, people. Um, then the then the Italian one, which which isn't French, it's Italian, and a very nice one there uh, with the red surrounds, and obviously the uh, Mediterranean theatre one as well. So, yeah, I think that's a big thumbs up from us, isn't it? <coughs> ah, excuse me. Yes, very much so. Um, and I'm, I, I mean, I, I want to say it's it's plainly obvious that there's going to be a Soviet boxing of it, um, but I don't know at the moment. Mm. The, the, you know, uh, unfortunately, politics rears its ugly head. Um, mm -hmm. But you would you would think that uh, in very short order there would be a, um, a a purely Soviet boxing of that for because they used thousands of them, um, mm. and it was one of their primary sort of um, lend lease aircraft, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so it would be interesting to to see um, if um, if hobby trumps politics, shall yeah. we say? Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll, we'll I'll, be, I'll be keeping a close eye, mm -hmm. um, uh, John and Collins probably a says, French option as well at some point. Oh, god, god yeah, yeah. Uh, John Collins says Bruce the Buffalo could be in works yeah, from you know armor. What? Bruce, Bruce the Buffalo in the works from armor, yes, please, thanks, and um, yeah, bring it on. Um, no, and, I, I uh, wouldn't say no to a Bruce the Buffalo um, or six. <laughs> Again, there's a lot of color schemes for the Buffalo, isn't there? There's a you know, the, there's a variety of Finnish ones, RAF, Dutch. Yeah. You you've know, also the, got the different yeah. variants. You've got the, the, the short nose and the long nose. Yeah, yeah. US Navy as well. Um, including some very late in the war, which were um, in the three tone scheme. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, the ones that we use for training. Mm -hmm. So there's 
you know, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there are a couple of people tonight who were rather disgruntled that we'd. Um, I know. No, no, we haven't mentioned that. Yeah, they've, they're a bit disgruntled. We haven't mentioned a couple of kits which are actually we've we actually got here. <laughs> yeah, on the... We've actually got queued up. Thank you very much. <laughs> just we've calm got... down, people. Calm just down. Come on, come on, come on. Don't let's not have fighting in the ranks here. So um, yeah, very good, very good armor. So you know they really are. They've come from nowhere in the last kind of five or six years to suddenly just sitting that you know they're literally they're sitting there at, well, at the front they, they they've they've followed the you know almost exactly the same trajectory that edward followed 15 20 years ago they, they weren't gone from being a limited run injection molded with lots of you know um etch and all that sort of stuff um and they sort of like suddenly decided they're going to start doing you know full full injection molded kits um and they're just absolutely stealing the show they're mm -hmm. absolutely stealing the show with it so mm -hmm. um Yes, um, and if they want to get around to doing Griffin engine Spitfires, I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be fine. You know, I I, I will have no objections. No, so. absolutely. Um, we um, we've also got tonight, which is one that you were particularly excited about, and you I think I think you've ordered these. This is Hobby Two Thousand, and they're doing two boxings of the B twenty six B Marauder. Well, BC yes. Marauder. Um, this boxing is Ninth Air Force European Theatre of Operations. Um, some very nice uh, olive drab and neutral grey examples there. Um, you're quite stoked for this, aren't you, Drew? I'm. I'm. A, I've always been a huge fan of the Marauder, um, mm. and the uh, Hasegawa kit, the seventy second scale one, is an absolutely gorgeous model. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was saying that earlier this year we were discussing Hobby 2000, and I said I'm really, really hoping that in due course um, they get round to to reboxing the um, the Hazigar Marauder. Um, mm -hmm. And not too many months later, here we are um, with, with two boxings of the Hazigar Marauder um, containing uh, cartograph decals uh, and masks for 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 the clear areas, um, and. The thing is, if you look at this, you, the, these are available. These are going to be available for about thirty quid. Mm. Um, so, to me, uh, you know, a, a seventy-second scale Marauder Hazigar Marauder mm. with cut graph decals and masks for thirty quid is an absolutely brilliant package. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I, think, I think that's real value for money. Yeah, we'll run through the schemes here. We've got this one is uh, Valkyrie, which is from the 497th Bomber Squadron, 344th Bomber Group, 9th Air Force, based at Cormiel, Cormiel en Vexine in uh, France, autumn 1944. And then we also have uh, this one, which I can't read what the name is there, but uh, this is from the 584th Bomber Squadron, 394th Bomb Group, 9th Air Force, Holmesley, South UK, summer 1944. So these are all, you know, kind of classic olive drab and neutral grey schemes. But I really, I really like the um, the, the Valkyrie with the, um, the the partially obscured invasion stripes on top. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. um, that, that's really attractive. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Um, so yeah. Um, and then they're doing awesome. another boxing, another boxing, would you believe? And this one is the B-26 BC, and this is from the Mediterranean Theatre of Operations. And with this one, you get, he says, trying to call up the other image he's got here, uh, you've got, and again, it's two aircraft, but I don't have a problem with just two aircraft. I think that's a perfectly reasonable set of options. Um and what we've got here is we've got, I can't remember what the name is, but we've got one from the 442nd Bomber Squadron, 320 Earth Bomb Group, 12th Air Force in uh, De Deki Monomu. Mon Deki Deki Monomu. Yeah, that's the one. Sardinia, August 1944. Um, and then the other one we've got, I know we've got a guest waiting in the wings here, so we'll just wrap this one up here. And then we've got this one, which is uh, 04, 337th, uh, bomb squadron through the 19th bomb group 12th air, air force that squadron again uh, that air base rather sardinia june 1944 so that's a rather that's a little bit more vanilla but um, i like i like the um i like the top one because it's got the medium green patches 
Yes, I do like that. I got to say, of the two kits, I do prefer the other one, the European Theatre of Operations one, because there's some quite funky things going on there. But, yeah, I've, um, ordered, I've ordered multiples of both. So, right, fair enough. Fair enough. Right. Um, so, yeah, excellent stuff. Right, we've got a special guest here tonight, um, who's who's um, pulled himself off his sick bed to come and join us. Um, how are you feeling, Spence? <laughs> Rubbish. Awful. Yeah, but it is what it is. It's, yeah. You've been yeah. watching the show then, clearly. Um, no. <laughs> I've, I've basically you said rubbish, just... awful. You... Yes. No, yeah. I can't imagine that would be ever be the case, to be honest. Yeah. So, uh, well, what's yeah. wrong? What's you've wrong? joined us. You've joined us at the opportune moment here because we're going to discuss. Uh, there was some. There was some dissent in the ranks that we haven't mentioned new tack-on releases, and it's like, come on, people, give give us some credit here. We are going to mention some new tack on releases, and I know these are particularly um, floating your boats, gentlemen. So let's just dive in. And they're doing a whole <coughs> series of essentially patent tank variants, <coughs> kicking off with the M48A3 Mod B, which is this beauty. Um, then they are going to do... I'm building this up, folks. I'm building me part. Then they're <laughs> doing the M48A5, of which uh, you've got that one there. But, and I know this is the one that you two are particularly chomping at the bit over, they're also going to do a Sergeant oh, York. Yeah. <laughs> an M247 Sergeant York. Mm. We're quite happy about that, aren't we, Spencer? <laughs> I, I'm not entirely sure that that even begins to go close. <laughs> uh, yeah. We're going to we're going to have some fun with this, aren't we, Spencer? <laughs> we we are indeed. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I mentioned this a few days ago. Uh, uh, of all of the kits that have been announced this year, um, and, and we're now into September, so I appreciate that Christmas is rapidly running towards us. Um, th that Sergeant York is absolutely top of my list of, of kits I want to build. In fact, I think it's pretty much the only one on the list at the moment. Um, it's it, just having having eulogised about how much I love the the it wildly inaccurate Tamir <laughs> kit, which it only bears a passing resemblance. The, the Tamir Sergeant York is to Sergeant York's what the de Havilland Hornet by Trumpeter is to de, de Havilland Hornets. Um, I don't think the turret's too awful, is it? I think it's mainly to do with the completely wrong hull and stuff. Yeah, the, um, the, the problem that you've got with it is that they based it on their, on their vanilla M48, and they didn't really make any changes to the hull. The hull of, an, of a Sergeant York is very different from an M48. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the yeah. engine deck is completely different. It's got huge raised sections on it. Um, there's lots, lots and lots of different details all over that hull as well. But that's before you even get to the turret. Um, and I think what, if memory serves me rightly, I think to me a base there, Sergeant York, on a wooden mock-up um, um, that, that gave them sort of superficially the shape that they needed and some of the details. Whereas this thing looks very close to what I've seen of the constructed vehicles. Um, you, you and I love this vehicle, despite the fact that it couldn't hit a bear's backside. Oh, it was, a, it was an absolute farce. It was a catastrophe. It was just, almost almost from the get go. It was just utterly, was just, utterly useless. It was um, just a shock. In fact, I spent I spent like twenty minutes before we came on air tonight just refreshing myself of how much of a catastrophe the entire program was, <laughs> indeed, um, indeed. and and yeah. it was laughable. Um, yeah. Uh, Let's just say it would have probably it would have probably have taken out more enemy airplanes if you just shoved it out of the back well, of the Hercules. Well, I just I was looking at sort of the, the last set of trials where they, they they eventually they simplified it to all it would have to do is track and shoot down a drone moving in one single direction at a constant speed and altitude, and that was it. And it couldn't do that. <laughs> so then they moved it to doing it, uh, having to lock on to and shoot down a drone that was hovering. And it couldn't do that. So then they started putting radar reflectors on the drone so it would show up to the radar on the Sergeant York. And eventually they had to get four radar reflectors hanging off the drone before Sergeant <laughs> York could lock onto it. And then it missed. 
it, um, it certainly wasn't uh, built for the age of stealth. That's for no, sure. they, I think it's just, uh, some some guy who was criticising it said it's th that this trial was the equivalent of getting a bloodhound to find a man standing alone in the middle of a parking lot covered in stakes. <laughs> 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 I, I do love it, and, and, and the story as well of 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 them during I think a demonstration for the top brass, where it locked onto the fan in a toilet block <laughs> rather yeah, yeah, than yeah. the target. I yeah, because it, it was moving, and then and then it, and then it actually locked onto the um um to the the seating area. <laughs> but that but that aside, the fact that it is in the history of 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 modern weapon system. It's almost in a field of one in terms of just how bad this thing was. Um, it's the coolest looking machine ever, isn't it? It's just yeah, and, and some of the—I mean, some of the film of it actually firing at ground targets. It looks like a mean piece of kit, yeah. um, and, then, and then you realise that you know if you're firing two forty millimeter bofors at anything on the ground, it's going to look quite mean. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. by, just by dint of the fact that you're hoofing forty millimeter shells down range. Um, yes, yes. Uh, but it's it's curiously sort of because it uses those Bofors forty millimeter um, uh, cannons rather than the more popular uh, Orlikan thirty five millimeters like on the Gepard and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's got that curiously World War Two look about it, where it's got those conical flash fighters and stuff on it. Yeah, so it, yeah. looks, it looks like a, a like a throwback to World War Two. It does. Um, it looks. It looks almost like a mini version of the um, of the Crusader anti-aircraft gun, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> description, that kind of description of it um, not being, you know, of being a kind of like a bit of a technological uh, a technological hiccup. It, it just sounds like a tractor version of an ED two hundred nine, doesn't it? It's good, well kind of. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, it was just yeah. it, it was just absolutely. You know, the the, the radar, the, the tracking radar was basically an APG sixty six from an F sixteen. Yeah. Um, but they made no real modifications to it to, to operate it in a ground environment rather than an air environment. So it just, yeah. it, it was it, it was just an utter catastrophe. It was. Um, and, but, but as a subject for a, a model, and I've, I recently, only a few years back, I completed um, a, a build of the Tamir kit. Um, and I did it as a what if, you know, what if this this vehicle had gone into service and had, and had taken part in Desert Storm? And I did it as a, like a Desert Storm um, and vehicle with sit panels on the side and stowage and all of that kind of thing. Really, really enjoyed it. A completely inaccurate model. It wasn't anything like the, the the real thing. But this thing gives us the chance to build something that represents the real vehicle really nicely. Um, I kind of like as well that this series appears to open up possibilities for other things as well. Um, I, I don't. I'm not a big. Uh, I'm not a big expert on these vehicles by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm thinking that um, that a number of them would be they could be used for later um israeli vehicles um, yeah yeah, yeah. Late, later israeli vehicles and i'd be very surprised if you're not going to get an m48 a5 a1 g2 or whatever the the very yeah. very late german ones um yeah, that yeah. reserve forces use so. and stuff like that so it, it, it very much um opens up a, a you know a, a whole variety of um uh, of possibilities, not mention the Taiwanese used a load of them as well, didn't they? M16 yeah. as well as yeah. in, in various upgraded formats. So, yeah, I, I think it seems as though that A5 as well, from reading sort of between the lines over the last couple of days, um, um, is was used a lot by the um, National Guard as well. So there's some yeah. kind of cool color schemes on those things as well, and uh, and everything. Of course, for us, if we're going to build a Sergeant York, and but you and I are probably going to be champing at the bit as soon as this thing gets released um unless you build one of the extant vehicles one of the test vehicles and, and replicate one of those you're going to end up building a what if almost aren't you uh, yeah yeah i mean i built uh, like you i built the tamiya one probably six seven seven or eight years ago um and i did it in one of the um the winter verdant european scheme no no sergeant york ever wore that scheme yeah um but it was it was just a really nice because you can imagine it next to um you know a bradley or a, a 105 abrams yeah. in that scheme in europe so yeah, what, what, what happened to that model drew hey what happened to that model well i sat on it <laughs> <laughs> keeps bringing it up yeah he doesn't want to go will he he you know, it just knows how much it, it hurts you. You could see, um, you could see as you were talking, you could see it, it that it was dancing across my face. I was just, I can't wait to mention <laughs> that Drew 
had a bath, went to his bedroom, flopped down on his bed and sat on his Sergeant York, which is not a euphemism. <laughs> no, not a, not a euphemism. Sat on not his Sergeant euphemism. York. See, I'm I'm all already sort of semi-planning to do an updated version of Francois's diorama. Um, with I did, I, and that, that kind of the diorama he did with the Sergeant York and stuff in it just is the one I, you know, it, it's yeah. in my mind's eye. Um, yeah. But a much, I'm thinking a much more detailed version of it with, you know, so that's the layout, that's the idea behind it, but add loads more stuff into it. Because it's kind of cool, isn't it? Um, and I, I just love the idea of it. I love the, yeah, I can't wait for this kit. I just, I, I was so excited when it came out. And that's really unlike me. Because yeah. I, I love those the... anti aircraft, those twin cannon anti aircraft gun setups. They're all cool, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. You know, the, the, the Gippard's cool, the Marksman. You know, yeah. um, you know the marksman worked well enough. The 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 the, the Finns bought seven of them, I think, and yeah. mounted them on T fifty five hulls. Yeah, withdrew them all from service in about two thousand and nine. Then in two thousand and fifteen, when we quite like these, should we get them back? And so they mounted them on Leopard two hulls now. So <laughs> wow. you've got this you've got this marksman turret that was first shown <laughs> on a Chieftain hull, eventually entered service on a T fifty five hull, and is now in service on a Leopard two hull. So so moving these these kind of these turrets about isn't terribly difficult no no absolutely not and in fact i'd sort of half thought it would be kind of cool to take one of those sergeant york turrets and update it put it on an m1 hull that would look really cool there yeah. You go. Um, yeah, yeah yeah so i mean it's just i mean that's a classic isn't it it's just, it's every bit as much of a classic as everything else it's sort of cool um so yeah and i thought that would look sort of nice um but i agree with you the gepard is is in my top five of of sort of military vehicles. It was funny when I was when I was reading about this earlier. I was thinking, why didn't they just take a a, a Gippard um, hull, a, a Gippard turret, and, and and slap it on a on an M forty eight or M sixty? You know, you'd be good to go. And then I read a bit further, and and Raytheon's entry for this competition was a Gippard turret <laughs> M forty eight. So oh, really, kind of, yeah, yeah, they they. they did, they have, um, did, did they actually build one of those? Is no, it, is it? no, no. Basically. There was a, there was a couple of. Um, uh, there was about five different entries, but I think this one was a Ford Aerospace one, um, and there was one other that was tested, but that had the 35 millimeter cannons. Um, yeah. But there's also from a program an anti-aircraft gun from the the late 50s and early 60s that was planned, which had a six-barrel 37 millimeter Gatling. <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> which is that enormous. Would, that would spew some fire out, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, and it was and it was 3,000 rounds a minute as well. Um, I think the magazine the magazine gave it four seconds of firing. Done. That's it. Moving on. Um, so I, I gotta I say, I gotta say that I have absolutely no. I've got no kind of like. I've got no no hook in this particular fish. It's not a vehicle I am particularly interested in. I can understand the appeal. I think it's an impressive looking bit of kit. Uh, but then seeing how massively enthusiastic you are about it, I want one now. I want one. <laughs> I think, I, I think the, the, only, the only time you are going to get Spencer and I equivalently enthusiastic about a, an armour kit is, is if either Takom or Meng were to do 105mm Abrams and early Bradleys. Is that yes. fair? Yes, absolutely. You would, fair, you, yeah. you, would, you would get an equivalent level of enthusiasm from us um, you, for that, you would, you would hear like the period. You would hear the whoops of delight in Somerset from here in the snowy North Midlands. If I, think, I think I think that's this, very likely. By the way, yeah. I think that when this kit comes out, I think that we should have some kind of build off because you're going to be building it. You down there, you, as soon as this kit comes out, you're going to be building it straight away. Yep. Him, he's going to be building it straight away. Who am I? Who am I not to give in to um, the, oh, the, the Zeitgeist? Well, says he, he's in as well. <laughs> yeah, we, we're going to have an we're going to have an enormous Sergeant York like uh, um, um, build off kind of thing. I think it'd be good. But there are some great, there's some really cool photographs actually of 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 the test development vehicles. One in particular that's in um, just overall um, whatever it is field green or forest, or green, isn't it? forest, forest green. green but it's really faded almost to like a yeah. minty color where all the rust is all 
is all down the sides and everything, and it's really faded. And I think that would actually be a really cool subject to do with this vehicle as well. Do it in, in almost like a a scrapyard setting, you know, with with junk yeah. around it. I yeah, I mean, be... if they, well, it'd be, do do it in its setting in in the because it's it's on display outside, isn't it? So yeah, sort of like one of your one of your concrete plinths or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, I think and, that would be and, cool. but it would be. Um, I mean, it's it's important to, to to realize that although this was, you know, that the entire <laughs> program was an absolute cluster fuddle from start cluster to finish, uh, they 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 still made fifty of them yeah, they did, <laughs> you yeah. know, before it before it got cancelled, and and there, there's still I think three or possibly four of them in existence and on show in places. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it, it certainly wasn't a cheap project, was it? If they completed, no, it, no, 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 it was. Uh, you know, that, that, they must have thought to themselves, this is going to be a success. So rather than just do a couple of development aircraft like the Hornet, where you do like six, let's let's do an entire order and then see if it works. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, I because know. it was, you know, before the trials had finished, it was already in production. Oh, so wow. it was, you know, it, it was just, oh, no, really? Um, <laughs> wow. I'm just going to say, they are also doing some accessories for this as well. So they're doing the T142 workable tracks for the uh, M48 M60 family. And then they are also doing the T97 E2 workable tracks as well. Um, right. So they are, you know, they're, they're clearly, clearly, you know, I know they've, they've, owned, or they've only announced the M48 uh, and obviously the uh, the Sergeant York, but they obviously have their eyes on the M60 as well for yeah. a future variant and and others as well. So um, yeah. some very nice thinking there from Tacon. They've they're 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 an interesting company, aren't they? Well, I see that Andy King made an interesting comment earlier on, mentioning about doing a bridge layer, and that would be something yeah. that uh, that I think would be would be a bit down their street as well, and. And, and I think Pavel had built a bridge layer. I don't know if I think it might have been the M60 variant. Um, um, so it would be interesting to see whether or not they go down kind of that that route, you know, mm. um, of, of building those sort of those sort of machines as well. Um, mm. Please, somebody, can you do a Chieftain bridge layer? Can we do? Can we have one of those? Yeah. We have a Chieftain hull. We have yeah. the suspension yeah, and running. Well, can I'm you just do a bridge? I'm doing bits and bobs. I'm sort of slowly working my way through the uh, Meng one at the moment. Mm. The main chieftain at the moment. Yeah. Um, so, chieftain um, bridge layer and the chieftain uh, ARV would be um, would be. Yeah, I've got the Tacom marksman downstairs, which is the chieftain with the marksman turret on it. So, mm. um, yeah. which, which I've got sort of vague plans to do in a Berlin Brigade scheme. Um, yeah. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the, the the plan is to do this 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 uh, main chieftain I'm building at the moment in a Berlin Brigade scheme. Nice. Um, and I just kind of think the marksman next to it would be uh, would, would would be quite a, a nice couple, you know. You didn't you didn't fancy a, a marksman in splinter camouflage then, like a well, I've, I've got I've actually got the um, Tacom. They they've also boxed the marksman turret with the T fifty five and a finished one with splinter. So I've got that as well. Um, yeah. So um, potentially yes. Um, I'm surprised. I, I would. I'm surprised they haven't done the leopard two, but then Tacom haven't done a leopard two yet. So, <coughs> um, they, they've got no hull to, yeah, to to, to stick it on, um, yet. Uh, yet. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's um, it's just, it's just great subject matter, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, I think um, so. You and I both got a thing about this sort of late sort of seventy five to eighty five thing, yeah. or I would say probably seventy five to about nineteen ninety. Because if anybody fancies Doing new challenge or <coughs> please and thank mine you. is seventy five to about eighty three. Yeah, a very short. So the window. very very early, so very early challenger ones as well would be welcome. Yeah, once once eighty three happens, armored warfare ended in December thirty first of nineteen eighty three, <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, everything after that is just silliness. But everything before that is cool. It's a bit like yeah. aircraft. As we've discussed, everything before 1983, cool. Everything after 1983, hmm. except Harry GR9s, which of course we all know are. Yeah, so I've got, I've got, I've got that. I've got that. Yeah, um, and I've got the. Uh, they did, they did it with the T55 hull as well. So, um, yeah, it's quite an interesting cha difference, isn't it? And, and how they mounted the guns compared to the. Yeah, guns. they were mounted right at the front of the turret on that. Yeah. 
yeah. and uh, sort of halfway back on the Gippard. So yeah, yeah, um, still cool though. Well, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the Finns have always loved theirs. It's, you know, considering they only bought, I think, six or seven of them, um, you know, to actually pull a retired um, a retired unit out of storage sort of six, seven years after you've retired it to mount the turrets on fresh hulls um, indicates they were, you know, they're big fans of it. Yeah. Um, yeah and in the fact, there's some, there's some footage on uh, YouTube that I was watching a fair while ago now of the Finns doing sort of um, range work with the uh, with the marksmans um, yeah yeah um, but that, that, that looks impressive oh those guns make they make a big bang <laughs> yes. they make a big bang mm. so uh yeah it's, uh, it's it's very impressive but the same as watching the gipard do its job you know mm. those, those 35 millimeters look brutal so. So can we we can we assume then that we're we're fairly excited by tacom's uh, announcements yeah, I'm on board. I'm, I'm in. Yeah, me too. It looks that's great. great well. leopard 2, it? That's I'll nice join in. I'll join in. That's on the Leopard 2 hull there. So. Mm. Yeah. Right. But, um, yeah, I'll join in. I'll, I'll build one. I'll build one. What the hell? I'll build a, I'll build a Sergeant York. You know, I, do, yeah. I, feel, I feel like an adult modeler suddenly that I'm building a big complicated subject that's beyond my <laughs> sticky little fingers so um it has uh, nothing we, we, to recommend it john being an adult modeler trust me it, yeah, it, i suppose um really we're is. not finished with tacom at the moment because to round off tonight's show this is another one of their new announcements and blimey oh blimey governor they're doing a a 150 ton oi super <laughs> heavy tank um, <laughs> this is what we would colloquially call a girt monster. It is, it's a kaiju of a tank. It is absolutely mammoth. Um, and it was one of those kind of Japanese paper projects that kind of, you know, wouldn't have made any difference really to the war, but um, it's just absolutely huge and ridiculous. And um, I like the look of that. Although it does like it carries a filing cabinet on the side. Yeah. It, it just, it, it just, it, there's something about it that just looks um, old fashioned. You mm. know, the, 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 the German super heavies, you know, the mouths and stuff like that, they, they still looked, you know, as modern as something in 1944, 45 could do. That looks like something from 1928. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, that I, thing, I, I just seen on the, on the box, that thing's 28 centimeters long. It's enormous. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, under a foot. It's just under yeah, a foot long, and it's just. But even the, you know, even the cannons there, they they don't they, they look like quite piffling for such a big tank, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, you know that. I mean, the Mavs had what was it, a hundred and twenty-eight millimeter cannon or something? Mm. I mean, the, the Mavs's side, you know, the, the Mavs's um, auxiliary gun was eighty-eight millimeter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that yeah. Was, my other, my other gun was an eighty-eight millimeter. Yeah. yeah. I have um, a sneaking suspicion that, that that from looking at the pictures of this kit, it does look like it'd be quite simple to build. But mm -hmm. it's it's offered a frustration that I have with with Tacom, and um, it goes back to something that I, I said a couple of weeks ago. In this kit, there's a figure. If you look at those renders, there's there's mm -hmm. a figure with this, um, and they've released three vehicles from a period where. Crew figures for those vehicles are extraordinarily difficult to find. And I would have been really happy to have had a commander figure in each of those three releases, the two M48s and the Sergeant York. Um, and this, I guess, shows that, that they can do figures um, because there is one supplied in this kit. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, and I, wonder, I wonder why they've they've decided to go down that route with this particular one and not with with because I don't recall figures appearing in any other Tacom kits. Is this a first? I've no idea, to be honest. Yeah, we'll I'd, throw I'd... that out to the throw that out to the crowd out there if you know. Um, if you know, if you know. Um... Yeah. But I, I think it, it looks like a fairly simple build, doesn't it? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just big theory, it's all the big track panels, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm sure Night Shift is looking at it, and he will, um, uh, Martin will um, get to work with uh, riveting and, and welding and stuff on it. I just yeah. got a feeling he's going to build this. 
Yeah, yes. he did do that. Oh, Jap- he did do that Japanese tank from Fine Molds, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. one of those. Yeah, it, it just looks right up his sort of uh, strata, so mm, to speak. Yeah. Um, yes. But uh, I mean, it's not. A, it's a subject that leaves me utterly cold. I have to say, I just think it looks too. Um, it's too archaic to to engage my interest, but but um, uh, you know at least it's not a um, at least it's not a Vermac nineteen forty six back of a fag packet design. Yeah, um, I can't I can't help thinking that the fans of World of Tanks must be sharpening their collective pencils looking at this thing to see what sort of things that they can add to it and yeah and create yeah. something completely bonkers from this kit because that just seems say, to be looking a good at that, looking template. at those renders. There's lots of nice detail on the hull. Like I say, it looks like a looks like it, it kind of carries filing cabinets on the side, but on the um on the front there underneath the, the turret I, I, really would it be, just be completely blank like that mm. i i can't i can't think that that would be there'd be nothing there surely there'd be rivets or something i don't know i don't know it's <laughs> a slightly incomplete render um yeah i think it looks certainly looks it doesn't it yeah and it's a, yeah. certainly it's a it's an interesting subject and like i say certainly uncle nightshift will be probably be eyeing this one up for a future project um yeah yeah uh, what can I say? Just because something doesn't interest me, I'm not going to begrudge somebody else wanting to build this. Because no, no, I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm saying it, it leaves me utterly cold as something I will, you know, I will never build this. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't think it's an interesting choice. Yeah, mm. you'll see loads of these built. Yeah, mm, no, yeah, you will. You'll see loads of them. They'll be everywhere um, because it's a, an incredible canvas for for mm. weathering effects, dust layers, rust streaks, the whole nine yards. It'd be great. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a pretty original choice, and quite like it actually. Yeah, oh, I've got people, no, people, no issues with it whatsoever. People Whatever. complain not another Sherman, not another Tiger tank. Well, there you go. You got an OI tank from uh, from Tacom, you know. Yeah, well, I didn't want that <laughs> really. <laughs> um, but yeah, fabulous. So. Um, yeah, tack on, um, armor hobby. Goodness me. Uh, yet again, this, you know, the, the, the pace of releases is in rude health, isn't it? Yeah. And I mean, sort of been announcing new stuff this week as well, haven't they? Uh, um, new 70 seconds scale Betty bomber, um, which, uh, you know, ironically for a limited run will probably be more easily available than any Hazegawa ones, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, you know, um, uh, but they look like they're getting better and better with each release as well. So it's uh, you know there's, it's been a week of um, uh, a very lively week, shall we say? There we go. And, yeah. Russell Taylor's just said sword um, uh, a GM G four M one Betty. So, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll we'll have a look at that on the next show. Simon Parkinson says the mouse secondary was a seventy five millimeter. Oh, I thought it was an eighty eight. Okay. No. Um, it's still a fairly hefty gun for a you know a secondary. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Jim, Jim Altergott says looks ridiculously clumsy and old, but I don't know which one of us he's referring to. Yeah, that'll be me again. Uh, um, <laughs> and, uh, and Simon, that's a good one actually. Simon Lewis says, "Who, who, who will you get to judge the finished models?" Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, well, that'll lead us on to a whole discussion about judging, won't it, Spencer? <laughs> it, it will, and, and as uh, somebody that is um, um, puritanically opposed to any form of competition within the hobby currently, um, I don't really want my models to be judged. Um, so I'll pass. That's okay. Right. <clears throat> On that note, this is quite good tonight. We've not overshot too much. Any other business? No, not for me. I don't think so. No. Any book news, Spencer? Say that again. Any book news? Uh, no, not currently. Um, no. The other than anybody that's sort of followed this is that the Spitfire book is now on Pocket Mag, so you can mm-hmm. download this book, and that the remaining collection will hopefully be on Pocket Mag in the next two weeks. Which means that every single thing that I've published over the last ten years will be available for digital download, mm-hmm. and that includes the much requested. To me, a Tomcat book, Harrier book, Tornado book, and F104 book, um, which mm-hmm. everybody seems to ask me about on a fairly regular basis. But beyond that, no, not not at the minute. Um, so which no, monogram I'm... classic are you currently plowing through I'm, at the moment? I'm currently building the F105G. Um, so, yeah, doing that and using... Um, 
<coughs> I think we've. I think I showed you this last time. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Very so, very um, just going through through that. <coughs> slight problem this week is that it's Elizabeth's last day before she goes back to school. Mm. So this week, my head's not really been in the game. I haven't really wanted to do anything. Um, but I do have. Um, I do have like various parts base coated and and all of that sort of stuff i have to say um of all of the monogram century jets this is by <coughs> far the easiest to build i mean yeah i think it was, it was it was pretty much it was what well into the run of the late 1984 85 sort of time yeah yeah so, it's um, fits together really nice i mean the there are some quirky bits on it. There are on all the monogram kits, but um, it fits together really nicely. I, I think um, the other thing that helps that is that the F-105 is quite a simple aeroplane. You know, the wings stick on the side of the fuselage. That's, you know, yeah. There's no Not much blending going on. There's no funky blending or anything going on with yeah, the F-105. No, it's just, it's just a big brute of an aeroplane. Yeah. Um, it's there are some. There are certain things to think about when you're building it, like the undercarriage, for instance. The undercarriage is about 74 feet high on the 48 scale kit. Uh, so when you put it on its wheels, it basically just does. Oh, it always it, it always oh. does that. Is um, um, I can remember so, the 70 second scale one building the 70 second scale one, and you sort of put it down. It, it shimmies for about five seconds when you put exactly. it. <laughs> so, so so basically, right. what I. I, I pinned it. I, each of the undercarriages' legs was drilled all the way through, and it's got brass rod in there. So hopefully, when it's glued together, it will not wobble quite as much because yeah. it's a big old model. Um, it has to be said, so, big old aeroplane. Big, big old aeroplane. Uh, yeah, but, um, Brian Scott pointed out today that that actually the length of its underwing tanks is actually greater than its wingspan, which I thought was an interesting um, 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 sort of comment to make. And I looked, and I brought it in, and I put the wing. The drop tanks by the by the wings, and they are in fact longer than its yeah. wingspan. Extraordinary. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it's a strange thing, but I always look at the the underwing tanks on the F one hundred and five. Um, were the same tanks that we used on the HH fifty three Super Jolly Green Giant? Oh, are they the same tanks? Are they? Yeah. And then when they upgraded the Super Jolly Green Giants, and they they got the bigger drop tanks, the bigger drop tanks on the sponsons of the you know the Pavlo and stuff are the um, Thunder Chief centerline tanks. Oh wow! Oh, that makes sense. They are the same shape, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> the I mean, look to see if there are if there are actually any F one hundred and five in this country. There aren't. There's two there in are. France. There's two in Germany. I thought there was. I thought there was one up north somewhere. Mm, isn't the one at, um, at, haven't, Isn't the one at Newark? Haven't Newark got an F one hundred and five? Well, I thought Newark or somewhere had one, but um, there's definitely one in the here. UK. No, it's not showing here on Wikipedia. List of surviving Republic F-105 Thunder Chiefs, but it's not actually. Um, I'll double check that. I mean, I could be I wrong. The only, one, the only place I've ever seen one, I, I saw one at Castle Air Force Base and Museum um, mm. and uh, was um, uh, quite smitten with it because it's just it's such a hefty, you know, yeah. massive beast of an aeroplane. Yeah, um, I, I they, used be, they used to be an F one hundred and five at Duxford that went to uh, Poland, uh, by all accounts. But there, uh, but I mean, I'm sure one of our viewers will correct us. Uh, but yeah. apparently, there are no F one hundred fours, F one hundred fives rather, left on display in museums in the UK. I don't the think it was, was it ever based in the UK. The F one hundred and five. I don't think it was. No, um, I think some of them were based in Europe, but it was never <laughs> based in the UK. <laughs> so. No, and the only time I've curious. seen one is I, I've seen two actually. Um, one was at Uzvar Hazy in uh, at Smithsonian. And they got an F one hundred and five D, I think, in there. And the other one that I saw was at Battleship Memorial Park, and uh, they got an F one hundred and five B in there. Oh, really? That had oh, been no. damaged amazingly. That had been damaged really heavily during Katrina. It had been literally whipped up and, and flipped over. That's how bad the storm was. And it got damaged. So I took a load of photographs of, and, and, of these two. Um, but for some reason, maybe somebody can explain this to me because I don't understand it. Um, I had I, Last year, and you two are quite tech savvy, but last year I, I upgraded my Mac Air and my iMac and transferred all of the all of the all everything across from one to the other, as you do, and everything. There's a bunch of photographs on my... Um, that were on my both my MacBook and my original iMac that aren't haven't transferred across. Can't find them anywhere. 
And I don't understand why that is, because all the files were transferred en masse. And then I went through it and I thought, there's like little blocks within the photos where they're not there anymore. And I, so don't oh. really know why that is. Um, so, and, it, and I can't find them on the iCloud either. So somewhere along the line, something's been deleted. But, um, but when you stand next to one of these things, they are massive, man. Oh, mm. Huge. Um, <laughs> just I've got to ask the question then. Uh, which do you think looks better, the single seat or the twin seat? Oh, without doubt, the G. I see. I'm a. I'm. I. I really, really like the single seater. I really like the D. Um, I. It's a, but I have to say, realistically, the the difference between a single and a twin seat a Thunder Chief is so minor. It is. Yeah. You know, it's it's the, there's not a terrible amount of of, of change that went into um, making a twin seater. Yeah. So uh, it, it's. It's not one I would. Uh, it's not one I'd get into an argument over. Put it that way. No, absolutely not. Although it's... the single seater is the best looking one. Too. <laughs> um... <laughs> it is indeed. Although presumably you could make the single seater from the two seater with very little additional work, couldn't you? It's pretty much identical. Um... Yeah, it just. I mean, literally, it's, it's chopping a section out of the fuse, large rejoining it, um, and that's and, it, um, and chopping a bit of the tail away. Um, yeah. A lot of people are saying uh, F one hundred five at Newark, but I'm looking. I'm looking it up, and it's not coming up here. So I, I was there convinced was there was one there. there. I, was, I was convinced there was one at Newark. Mm. Uh, yeah, but... Not, not a Johnny sausage, I'm afraid. Um, but we'll carry on. We'll carry on having a look. They've got an F one hundred there, and I've been following what they've been doing because I'm a, a friend of Newark Museum, and um, <laughs> I've been following their their progress on various mm. projects over the summer. But no, not. Um, mm. Not seeing an F one hundred and five. Talking of wild weasels, is anybody else eyeing up a, a GWH Mig twenty nine and some arm rifles? <laughs> yes, like, <laughs> like I am. Yeah, <laughs> I made the comment to you, Drew. That is it possible to have a favourite missile? Because I don't know of a single aircraft that carries those missiles that doesn't look cool. Yeah, they all just yeah. look magnificent. Don't it's they? a good looking missile, isn't it? It's a it's a good looking just missile as well. It's, um, yeah. uh, and uh, so I, I mean, I spent a long time building a pair for this growler that I must get on with at some point. But um, yeah, I'm kind of looking. I've got a little mini stash of 48 scale GWH MiG 29s, and and kind of looking at those. And we 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 got to have details at some point of the actual, you know, the the aircraft that are carrying. Those yeah. Now. Um, and hopefully yeah. some some um, some details of the uh, adapter pylons. Mm. Um, they seem right. understandably um, slightly twitchy about revealing which one. Oh yeah, abso ab absolutely. I mean, it was it was kind of like when they released it and they released film of it. They, you know, they didn't announce this is the great new. You know, it was just kind of released as part of some pilot's sort of telegram account or something. Some film of him flying. It's like, hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah. That's that's not an R twenty seven missile under the wing. No, Back up. Indeed. No, um, it does look it does look really impressive. Um, changing the subject very quickly back to Sentry Jets as well. I read something today which which had me intrigued, um, and that was about the F one hundred six Delta Dart, um, and it was a, a story. And I'm going to look into this because I'm I'm not sure whether this is true, but it seemed like a, a pretty good story. And it, it was an F one hundred six Delta Dart jockey who was give, being given a tour of an F twenty two base in the states. And the F-22 pilots were were raving about the fact that they, their F-22s could super cruise. And the Delta Dart pilot says, hmm, interesting. We managed to do that in 1960 um, in the Dart. The Dart would afterburn and then it would fly supersonic just on military power. And I thought, that's an intriguing stat. I wonder if that's true. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. I, I would think... Um, that uh, the, it would probably need afterburner to get there. Yeah. But once it was there, I, I suspect it could probably do in excess of Mach 1 on dry power without any trouble at all. Yeah, um, that was, that was pretty much it, what he said. It's sleek, it was, isn't it? It's, it's a slick yeah. aeroplane. It's yeah. a very, very slick aeroplane. So that wouldn't, that, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, the, the, it's the, beautiful. That it do that. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest. It I is. think the thing with something like the Raptor is it can it, it can super cruise and by that it can get there without using afterburner. Yeah. It will just keep it will just keep accelerating, <laughs> accelerating till it just uh, you know suddenly you're going supersonic and you don't even realise it. 
Yeah, so there we go. Like we, we, I knew we'd have one. RAF Crampton Gate Guard, a G model, was scrapped a few years ago. It was an ex Lakeham Heath battle repair. I knew, knew there was one in this country somewhere, but no, no, no F one hundred fives at all anywhere in the UK. And yet we have we have F one hundred one. We've got an F one hundred one. We've got an F one hundred here. We've got. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we haven't got the others, have we? F one hundred four. No, but then the F the F one hundred and F one hundred one both, <coughs> both aircraft that were based in the UK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, 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 they both they both flew from the UK. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that that would that would make sense. But it is a bit. I'm disappointed. There's no uh, extant F one hundred fives in the UK. Um, I've got to say, gentlemen, I'm very impressed. Um, uh, after I tinged for any other business, we've managed to go on for another fifteen minutes. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good going yeah. there. Well, you're master of ceremonies. That's your fault, not ours. No, 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 I'm, 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 letting, I'm, I'm letting it <laughs> flow. We're I'm just, letting it flow. Come on. All right. Any other business? Again. Yeah, Con Concord did Super Cruise. Yeah, but again, it still needed afterburner to get there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It still needed, you know, it still needed a reheat to get to to get to its cruising speed, and then it was about twenty five percent power, wasn't it? It was the throttled right back to stay where it needed to. Um, That's an extraordinary thing, isn't it? <laughs> just oh man, just when you think about how it the engineering to get it to do that is just wow, just extraordinary. So. But um, yeah, yeah, I don't have anything else, John. I've I'm, uh, other than to what seems like coughing one of my lungs up, which doesn't That's seem right. like the most. Pleasing is it, is it just a cold or is it COVID? No, it's definitely not COVID. No, yeah. it's uh, it is a cold. I've been kicking it around for about four or five days, and and I've got a headache and I'm hot and bothered and just mm. feeling. Yeah. Right. Well, so, my only other business is I I I did uh, dip into the uh, Taylor Hawkins uh, tribute concert last night. To see, uh, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much Alex every, and Getty. <laughs> yeah, Alex and Getty. Pretty much every band I love um, up there on stage with uh, with the Foo's, and uh, I got to say, the Queen segment was was quite remarkable. And they had um, Sam Ryder came on, a uh, rather unexpected guest, and God, what a remarkable talent that guy is! It's just, it was brilliant. I watched it. Some of the guest musicians they had, they had. Um, they had Taylor Hawkins' son. They had Rufus Taylor. Oh, he was absolutely playing his heart out. He, he was absolutely yeah. he was murdered. Absolutely yeah. playing. I was looking at him and thinking, that's a chip off the old block right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's right. Right. So, so, the whole failing right. thing was... Um, that, yes. that was a young man. What is he, 16? That was a young 16, man yeah. exercising his demons behind a drum yeah. kit there. Um, yeah. Roger Taylor's team. lad looks remarkably like Taylor Hawkins, doesn't he? Yeah. Doesn't it's, he just? Um, he does. And and also, I've forgotten her name now, but it was that young girl who challenged Dave Grohl to a drum off. She, Nandy she was Bushel. Oh, yeah. Nandy Bushel. Nandy Bushel. Nandy Bushel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a precociously brilliant talent for somebody that's twelve years of age. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm hoping they'll. Talent. I'm hoping they'll stream the whole concert so you can go back and pick up on it because it was. I didn't see all of it. I think I had to. I had to zone out when Paul McCartney came on because. Well, it's Paul McCartney, and um, you know, <laughs> wow. I'm sorry, I just no, I've got nothing against Paul McCartney, his sausages are lovely. Um, so, um, oh, they're, they're Linda's, that's true. Um, but that no, was good, it's very good, it's very good. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock anybody who was at that concert last night because it was brilliant, and um, yeah, what, what a gathering, what an absolutely unbelievable gathering. And um, anybody out there, it's worth, it's worth dipping into it. Also, I'm gonna say. Public Service Broadcasting, the prom that last week. If you've not seen it, it's on iPlayer at the moment. All oh, right, it's it'll blow your brains. It is absolutely amazing. And I, I remember how good the the one they did a couple of years ago when they did kind of like Race for Space and this and other. This is almost entirely a brand new suite of music that they did, oh, which right. was kind of like uh, to to celebrate the hundredth anniversary of the BBC. Uh, it was extraordinary. It really was. You know, you know. I mean, Drew, you and I saw public service broadcasting in Bristol five years ago, which mm. I, 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 remember, I remember us thinking, "Well, is this is this going to be any good?" Because it's just going to be a load of blokes with MacBooks, kind of like you know, hitting samples and things. It wasn't one of the best live shows I've ever seen. Bear yeah, in mind, I'd already seen them before at the O2. That's true. Yeah, I'd, I'd which you, a, a place that you singularly detest, by all accounts. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, 
the gig, the public service broadcasting gig at the O2 only kind of solidified that opinion that it's <laughs> an absolute tip. Awful wow. place. And I hate to say it, but it also solidified my opinion that metal crowds and more pop orientated crowds are very, very different crowds. Hmm. It felt very, very selfish and, and self interested at the PSV gig there. You know, nobody was giving anybody an inch of room to do anything. And, yeah. and you know, um, it just didn't, you know, it, it's an old, it's an old cliche that metal crowds look after each other, but it kind of felt that way to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I but, saw them at, um, at, at, um, um, Hyde Park was where right. I where I got to see them, and I agree with you. They were man, they were absolutely magnificent. They are seriously talented musicians. It's yeah. unbelievable how tight they are. Um, yeah. They do put on a show. Old Jay Will Goose and his buddies. They do. Uh, they certainly are good. So, and I'm still yeah. I'm still kind of like uh, working my way through Bright Magic, which is oh I love that album. It is just so craft worky. Yes. It's, oh, it's crack rock, isn't it? It's PSB do crack rock. Yeah. <laughs> But it's um, uh, which is which is a term that the Germans use uh, <coughs> their music. Um, but yeah, it is yeah. it is uh, it's a brilliant album. Uh, what a great band! What can we say? What a great band! Anyway, yeah, um, super. absolutely. On that note, we're just going to say thank you to Drew for joining us tonight. Thank you to Spencer for dragging himself off his uh, deathbed to come and <laughs> where he's um, going back to. He has to say, yeah. No, you're looking you're looking good, Spence. You're you're looking good. <laughs> He looks terrible, Drew. Don't let him know. It was awful. I'm worried. I feel Drew. awful. Yeah. No, thanks for thanks for joining us tonight, Spence. Um, well, we'll be back on Wednesday. Are you, you free Wednesday, Drew? Yeah, I will be here Wednesday. Bear, bear with me if I'm a little bit stressed and tetchy because I've got a new 3D printer showing up this week. So <laughs> <laughs> I might be about to restart the dialing in process for a new 3D printer. And um, yeah. <laughs> There's a the war of three D printers. As soon as as soon as you get a new one, then Mike Reeves gets a new one. Then you Mike Reeves is already, Mike Reeves has already got two of them, and he's got a third on the way of these new printers. So, um, hands up all those who haven't even got one. <laughs> Although I have been looking at getting one for oh, about for goodness, a couple sake. of months. So. Hands up those who have got two. Hands up those who have got three. <laughs> Hands up those who've got four. All right, that's <laughs> it. Right, if that's if we're going to go down that route, hands up, hands hands up all those who've got eight guitars. There we go. And on that note, <laughs> I've, got, um, I've got four drum kits. Does that count? Well, there you go. You see, everybody's everybody's got multiples of something they like. Yeah, I'll have yeah. one. I'll have one. No, you won't. Okay, fair enough. Um, on that note, um, thank you, Drew. Thank you, Spencer. We'll be back on Wednesday. Until then, as always, stay safe. Stay out of trouble, and we'll see you very Take soon. Take care, all. Bye, for all. <laughs>